welcome to the greenhouse, Knox Heritage's first Lead for Home certified project. We're showing how you can combine historic preservation with the latest technology in sustainability, energy savings, solar power, solar hot water, while putting back some of the historic character that was removed from this house over the last 100 years. One of the great things about this project is that we were able to bring together people who knew about conservation, preservation, um, green building, and have a team that put this whole project together. We had lead AP architects who were also on Knox Heritage's board and preservationists, so they brought a unique view to this. With the renovation of this historic house, we're hoping to achieve a LEED Gold certification using the U.S. Green Building Council's LEED for Homes rating system. We were able to bring in corporate partners who brought materials that fit our historic setting but were also Energy Star rated or the most efficient systems that we could get. I'm Jeff Christian and I'm a buildings researcher at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Two very unique things with this building that we're particularly looking at. One is the air barrier. The air barrier, extremely important feature. On the walls, it's the outside weather wrap taped and lapped which carries up into that suffet. That's a closed suffet, not vented. Therein, it meets the foam, which is on the underside of the roof. That foam encapsulates that weather barrier, making a very important junction to keep that continuity of that air barrier. And the second thing is the World Wrestling Championship as far as heat pumps go. And in the basement, you're going to have in one corner the best technology that U.S can produce, which will be the Carrier Corporation, and in the other corner, Daikin from Asia, of which these will be duking it out for one year as to who has the best energy performance. The key here is very efficient part load operation. Because of all the unique energy savings features in these homes, they're not going to have long hours of heating and cooling. There's going to be a lot of just a little bit of need for heating, a little bit for cooling. This is where the battle's gonna take place, right in here. And then in that corner, Carrier. And that corner, Daikin. Pounding it out. Last man standing wins. You don't wanna pay a port load efficiency. And that's what these two technologies will be showing us. We've totally gutted it because everything in here was not original anyway so that gave us the opportunity to go back and use materials and technology that we wouldn't have been able to use. I guess we'll be making that decision this evening. We have all new Energy Star double hung wood windows, wonderful recycled cellulose insulation in the walls, a bio-based foam insulation in the attic, and then one of the coolest things, or hottest things, that we're doing on this house is we have solar power and solar hot water on the roof in a way that is seamlessly combined with the historic character of the building and was approved by our local Historic Zoning Commission. We came up with the creative solution to combine thin film with solar hot water on the roof of the building. The greenhouse will have 1.6 kilowatts of solar PV thin film laminated on a metal roof. What you see is the reflective membrane, which will direct heat th in this direction, the metal roof, which directs the heat in this direction, and in between you have the PEX tubing, which carries a food-grade glycol, which will heat your water in the hot water tank. This tubing will supply enough solar hot water for 80% of the needs of a family of four. With this system, because we're limited with space, this is actually going to create approximately 10 to 12 percent of the electricity for this house. And this would make sure they were compliant with all of their historic zoning codes and um, not affect the aesthetic value of the building. It's a project that has really come about as the organization has embraced the whole area of sustainability and how to combine that with historic preservation. We see it as a demonstration project that shows how these two concepts can work together. We had a 
huge team of architects who came to work on this. We had partners from so many sectors that came together as a project to demonstrate how regular owners of old houses can incorporate some of our ideas from this house into their historic homes to save energy and leave less of a footprint on the planet while keeping the historic character of their houses. Our board of directors with Knox Heritage decided that sustainability and preservation are very compatible. There's nothing more sustainable than reusing a historic building. Your historic project may go for Energy Star or Earthcraft or any number of other um, rating systems that, that are out there. Water efficiency is something that we're doing at this house as well. Um, we're using low flow fixtures. Um, we're using compact fluorescence and light fixtures. It's a small, it's a small footprint for the, a small square footage for the four bedroom house that also is right sizing the home, which is something that we're doing with this house. We have a very small yard, but the landscaping that goes in will be edible landscaping and native plants. When we plant shrubs or small trees that, that create fruit or we plant blueberries or have a space for vegetable gardens is all part of edible landscaping. Hopefully no mowing for the future residents of the house. We're reusing some historic materials that are salvaged from other projects in order to bring back some of the historic character to it. Unfortunately, the house had been stripped of all of its original character. All the windows were replacement windows and that was done during the 1982 World's Fair when the house was completely um, stripped of its interior and its windows. So we were really lucky to find a corporate partner here in Knoxville who allowed us to obtain Energy Star wood double hung windows that fit the character of this house but also brought the energy savings that we were wanting to achieve in this situation. We had a funny moment when we were in a planning session where we knew we needed two exactly the same stained glass windows and I thought well, we're never going to find these things in a local source so while we sat in the committee meeting at Preservation Pub our board chair went on eBay on his iPhone and ordered the two windows which are now prominently displayed at the front porch on the house. We're reusing materials on this house for a couple of different reasons. One, we wanted to bring back some of the historic character. We're taking historic trim and doors and flooring um, all to be reinstalled into the house. And another sustainable reason for reusing existing or historical materials is because we're not using new resources and we're not transporting new materials across a great distance to, to bring them to the house so that's very sustainable as well. Um, we're also choosing materials that are have recycled content that are produced within a 500 mile radius and that have low volatile organic compounds. It helps with their indoor air quality. This is a recycled cellulose insulation. We were really happy to use this and found a great provider. It gives the energy efficiency that we want, but also gives a great sound barrier in an urban setting. That's something that's a bonus for the folks who live here. Being in a historic um, inner city neighborhood is excellent because LEED is looking at not only energy efficiency, which is very important, and water efficiency, but also at walkability, at sustainable sites and location and linkages. We have a perfect location here in an urban inner city neighborhood close to the art museum, next to a fantastic park, um, close to the University of Tennessee in downtown Knoxville. So we scored very well in the sustainable sites and, and location and linkages category. This project is one of 10 deep retrofit houses of which the results are all striving for 50% savings after the retrofit. If preservation doesn't adapt to some of these new technologies, it will cause us to lose our relevancy in the greater world of construction and preservation.